Hi, this is Brother Richard. This is Brother Richard. And today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 394. We're continuing with our lesson title, Reality Transit. This will be part 13 in the series. Scripture teaches at the gathering, activities in the heavens and on the earth will be joined together all that pertain to Christ will come into a unity of <coughs> what would be considered activity. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. Dispensation. Then, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So it's talking about the activities in the heavens and the activities on earth that pertain to Christ are going to be interconnected at that point in its fullness. Everything will move in unison in a progression in accordance with the Father's plan for the sons. Now we want to take a look at some examples here. People and events in the heavens connected with people and events on the earth. Mm. Scripture indicates it will start with the gospel of the kingdom being proclaimed by angels. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. <coughs> now we know that this takes place after verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You have the beginning of sorrows which takes place after the proclamation of the judgment, mm -hmm. which sets certain things in motion, and culminating with that is going to be the beginning of the connection of all things in heaven and on earth in Christ. Now, how do you know it's going to be done by angels? It doesn't say so. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a look at the condition of the earth. Turn to Jeremiah 4th chapter. Just as we're turning. Yes. When the Jews, and I'm specifically talking about the Jews only, uh -huh. when the Jews hear the proclamation uh -huh. about the return of the Lord and the establishment of his kingdom uh -huh. at some later point, do you believe that a good body of Jews at that point become messianic? No. No. Do you think it has any effect at all? No. Then hearing that? No. Not in the slightest? No. That's sad. No, they become Israeli, Israelite, not Messianic. But you would say that's an opportunity. More than an opportunity in Jesus' time. No, I'm talking about Jews who are already Jews, Mosaic Jews I'm talking about, who are yeah. already Mosaic. Yeah. Upon hearing this, do they think to themselves, hang on a second. No. no. I heard the voice of YHVH. What did that mean to them? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, hang on. YHVH doesn't have the power. Yeah, but YHVH is talking elevate. power. He's wiping people out. That's true. He's just passing judgment. Mm. And they go right back to serving all the guys. So they don't care. All right. Uh, you're dealing with humans here. I'm trying to give them a chance. <laughs> I'm trying to help them in some way. We're going to take a look at conditions on earth. 
Jeremiah 24, uh, Jeremiah 4, Starting verse 23, down to verse 26. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was in our form, and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place. The fruitful place was a wilderness. In other words, a paradise turned into a hell. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. So, man, at this point is uh, virtually imprisoned in whatever area he happens to be in. You have no <coughs> linking transit systems, no industrial systems, no metropolises, everything is ground to a halt. The governments are collapsed, the systems are neutralized. At this point, the Lord is going to initiate the beginning of the union between the heavens and the earth in Christ. It starts with the angelic proclamation of the kingdom of the heavens. We see this is going to be carried out because the same condition is going to take place in the tribulation period. Turn to Revelation 14, verse 6. <coughs> And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, <coughs> it's a duplication of what we're reading in Matthew 24. Notice what he says here. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, that's the human race, surface dwellers and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people <clears throat> remember the earth is not a planet it's a matrix mm -hmm. and it's talking about every inhabited area of the earth matrix is going to hear this gospel which a majority of them of course are not human but it's a gospel proclamating proclaiming the new world order under the prototokian sons. It's the gospel of the kingdom of the heavens. It is preached for a witness testimony, letting everybody know this is what's going to happen. Doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with it. Right. Or fall in line with right. it. But it's being said because the word of God is going out and standing for a testimony because it's going to happen, whether you like it or not. So we should understand that those in the holding areas of the torment regions at that time are also going to hear it. Sure. Sure. <coughs> Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates this will be repeated later on in the tribulation period we just read. <coughs> Scripture teaches each committed saint has angels ready to move in his behalf. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Connection starts with the fact that in Christ, this is the key, in Christ, in Christ, everything that moves in heaven is in Christ, the heavens, 
everything that's moving on the earth in Christ is going to be connected with the movements and events of those in the heaven. Starts with the angelic <coughs> imposition of activities that are going to favor the Prototokos saint. Turn to Hebrews. I'm going to go back. 1, verse they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, not to, but minister for, in other words, in behalf of them who shall be heirs of salvation. <clears throat> it's a future reference. In other words, at this time they're sent forth to minister in behalf of those not who are qualifying but who in the sight of the Father have qualified. <clears throat> Look toward the finished product. Right. It's set in motion at the beginning of sorrows. When the faithful saint is called, he steps forth. The angelic representative of that saint is also sent forth to minister in his behalf. But isn't that also true of those who will become saints because the father knows the beginning and the end so he knows that person will become a saint before this period that person has ministering angels well it's all done from eternity so if it's will or it didn't it doesn't no matter it's all right. set in motion at the same time the point i was trying to make was that ministering angels minister even before the period that you're talking about oh certainly yeah you read about that throughout Matter of fact, we're going to look at some examples of that. But okay. we're talking here about the finality of it. Right. When the heavens and the earth and Christ are connected okay. to that saint that's on the earth, this is the climax, the fullness of times. In other words, the Father's plan is entering its finality okay. in that life. Scripture teaches each committed saint has angels ready to move in his behalf. Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels, these little ones, they have m multiple angels, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. What is he saying here? He's saying if somebody does something offending them, then the angels are looking to the Father to see if he wants them to respond in behalf of that offended <laughs> saint. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Scripture indicates in the time of the beginning of sorrows, angels will be used to protect and deliver those saints accounted worthy. Luke 21 verse 36.
watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. <coughs> it's a warning to the saints that they live their life in accordance with the will of the Father for their life so that when these things happen they're already counted worthy to escape everything that's going to fall. You can't afford to wait to the last minute. You better be ready when the ax falls. Yes. Because if you aren't, then God's not going to assign the angels to protect that individual. He's on his own. Mm. Now we're going to take a look at some examples of this. It's going to happen just the way it happened <coughs> in the time of the book of Acts. It's going to be continuance, and it's going to be a continuance on a higher level. Acts, the 12th chapter, verses 4 to 10. Here, they're coming down heavy on the apostles for preaching the gospel. He's referring to Peter here. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, <coughs> intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. So he got a soldier on each part of him and he's got chains on him. Bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And <coughs> Excuse me. The chains fell off <clears throat> from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. <clears throat> and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. <clears throat> and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. <clears throat> and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So we see an example <coughs> of Peter being taken out of the current reality spectrum through an alternate reality and then brought back into this reality. He's got two guards sitting next to him. He got chains who don't see or don't don't perceive <coughs> that Peter's not there until the reality comes to them. This happens a couple of times. Acts five verses 16 to 20. <clears throat> the apostles are going forth, teaching, preaching, healing, <clears throat> not having a good reception from the Luciferians that are in charge of the Society, scribes and the Pharisees. <coughs> Acts 5, starting verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, 
which is dissected the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. They thought they were still in jail. When the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. <coughs> so we see here supernatural intervention in behalf of those who shall be heirs of salvation. This is all going to be repeated. Acts 8. Starting in verse 25. <coughs> Again, the apostles. It's going to be the forerunners of what? Exactly the same thing that the prototypes are going to be doing. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. <coughs> and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and a eunuch of great authority under Candice, the queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all our treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So we know what happens. He goes up in the chariot. He, he, he uh, <coughs> opens the eunuch's understanding who's reading Isaiah about Jesus being the Messiah. And if you believe on him, you will be saved. The Ethiopian does so, gets baptized. And John is... Philip is immediately whisked away, supernaturally, to another area. The Prototokos, this is the Prototokos, and this time that we're entering into, this is going to be common, everyday occurrences. Acts 10, starting in verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the man called the Italian band, a devout, devout man, and one that feared God in all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? He said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now we have a principle here. I'm going to stop here a moment and explain something. <coughs> As Peter <coughs> was visited by the angel in prison, Cornelius is visited by the angel in Caesarea. He sees him in a vision. They both do. What does that mean? It means the angel is coming from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. He's going to manifest physically because he's leading people, he's doing things. There's a transition that's being spoken of from the spiritual to the physical. And sometimes the saint is taken from the physical into the spiritual. <clears throat> As in the case of Peter, where he goes through the doors into the street, nothing is <clears throat> able to stop him. The doors open of their own accords and it goes where he's supposed to go. What you have here 
<coughs> is examples of the emergence of the physical and the spiritual to the prototokians. You reach a stage where your life transcends the physical. You're in <coughs> accordance, unity with both the physical and the spiritual, and that's how you're operating. <coughs> Let's continue. <coughs> okay, we're in uh, Acts 10. We're starting in... Uh, there's one. Okay. <clears throat> and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. And now, send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them on to Joppa. <clears throat> on the morrow, they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry. Would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open, a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things, fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. The voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit, Spirit said unto him, Behold, these three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Now we find a very interesting revelation here. The Holy Spirit takes the form of an angel, hmm. corporeal being, visits Cornelius, instructs him in something, and then visits Peter. The vision came from the Holy Spirit <clears throat> about don't call anything that God has created coming. So we see, <clears throat> and this is going to happen at the beginning of sorrows, all these things are going to again come into operation in this earth realm, but not for across the board. It's going to be only those in Christ. Are there any other instances you can tell us of of the Holy Spirit taking the form of an angel? No. This is the only one? No. That's it, as far as I can tell. Mm. And Mr. Jones? Yes. <clears throat> is that all you have to say about the only one that's ever been directed by the Holy Spirit? Like that? Well... In that manner? <laughs> it gives rise to thought. Okay, so now... The, before you read that out and he asked this question, you said there's going to be a lot of this. It's going to happen again considerably, a bunch. Yes. So, okay, that's interesting. Can you give us something pertaining to that? Um, you mean at the time of the beginning of sorrows? Well, the, the, the actual Holy Spirit taking a form, a body form, and and directing, teaching, sending, talking, fellowshipping? Well, it could have happened, but it's not defined that it was the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but you have angels operating in a way in which they're opening, making it possible for the Holy Spirit to come upon somebody to change that person, to make him born again. 
whether the angel was actually the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit sent an angel, it's not defined. That's why you can't really designate this is another, uh, 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 this is another uh, example. This is the only example that I find where the Holy Spirit says, yes, I sent him. I took an angel's form and but manifested to a, a, be a human. But since you said that you expect it to happen a lot more, mm -hmm. we're interested to know how, when, why. Why are you saying that? Why are you saying because, that? You know? Because what's, what's <coughs> noted, the beginning of sorrows mm -hmm. is going to be a continuation of the book of Acts on a higher level. In a new reality. Okay. The Holy Spirit is going to fall on people Number one, bringing them into <coughs> ministry positions of prophets, apostles. The Holy Spirit is going to manifest to the teacher, making him an angel. So when you say that, um, when Jesus says, and they will do greater works, than, works these. Than, than these, meaning the start of that age, that new reality, that's really what you're referring to? Yes. Okay. <coughs> yes. So obviously... The person that the Holy Spirit is going to fall upon to do something must be a holy or at least reasonably clean, without spot or blemish. Sure. Not reasonably, ultimately. Okay. okay. Well, I'm that's, that's that's prerequisite. No, that's exactly, what, because he's not going to just fall on a common no. person. Right. 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 Yes. And I, I can't see anyone doing greater works than Jesus if they weren't completely without spot oh, yeah, yeah. That's why the scripture we read consistently is telling us what the minimum requirement is. <clears throat> you have to be so dedicated that this is the most important thing in your life. Amen. That's just prerequisite. <clears throat> Notice what, go back to Luke, 21st chapter. Verse 34. <clears throat> and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day come upon you unaware. So the prerequisite here is not only having an exemplary commitment to the Lord, <clears throat> foolish virgins have that. That's why they're called virgins. Mm -hmm. Their commitment is one one thing only, they're going for the bridegroom. So what's being said here is not only do you have to pass the prerequisite of being committed, you have to pass the prerequisite of consistently looking at what's going on around you. Because even the committed can fall away if they don't apply this. <clears throat> and he warns over and over and over and over and over again, be watchful. Watch the things that are happening. Because it's going to happen quickly. And if you're not ready, then you're going to miss the whole thing. No matter how exemplary and committed your life has been, if you haven't watched, you know, the foolish yeah. virgins. Yeah. <clears throat> Take heed yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, that's pursuing the gratification <laughs> of the senses, and drunkenness, and cares of this life. My, my God, that, that will wipe you out. If the first thing that you're focusing on when you wake up in the morning are the problems that you're facing, the things of the human order, and you're not ready. The first thing that you should be focusing on when you get up is your identity as a son of God and the position that you are focused on in pursuing your day. Amen. 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 
Because if it's not, then you're just going to be a victim of your circumstances. Sure. That's why it says cares of this life. You're going to just go from one crisis to another, dealing, trying to put this fire out, trying to deal with that, uh, focusing on uh, negativity and the nonsense that passes for a way of life yeah. here. <clears throat> you're going to be tossed to and fro like a handkerchief in the wind. No, that's, that's, that's not it. Because he goes on and says, verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Why? Because that's their focus. <coughs> Watch <coughs> ye therefore and pray always. In other words, be in an attitude of prayer, communion, communication with the Lord your mind on the level of the heavens at all times. That ye, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. It's a prerequisite. Those that uphold these principles are going to be uh, part and parcel of what we just read about heirs of salvation walking in the supernatural having angelic uh, interaction on a daily basis and then seeing the power operate through them so it's a twofold thing you have angelic interaction and you have the spirit in you that's growing and showing you new things on a daily basis you're doing miracles you're rising to the position of uh, prepared, prepared to enter into the angelic state at his coming. All of this, the, plus the people that the Lord's going to send into your life to dialogue with, to prepare them for the things that are coming. It's going to be a pretty full plate. That's why we're going through what we're going through now, to prepare us to be ready when these things fall upon this world. <clears throat> 